my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel, Mina Reads. And today we are starting a reading vlog. This is going to be another episode of the English Major Diaries. My name is Mina. I'm an English major, and I am very busy right now. It's kind of like midterm season. Like my professors aren't calling them midterms, but I have a lot of like papers and assignments and all that kind of stuff that are coming up. And so it's going to be a really busy week for me. And I thought that maybe I'd try to vlog it and see how it goes. But thus far this week what i have been reading is legends and lattes by travis baldry i believe and i've been really really enjoying this book um so this is kind of like a slice of life fantasy and it's about this like orc warrior named viv and she's basically decided she's gonna retire she no longer wants to be in the mercenary business so she retires with all of her like hard-won money and she opens like a cafe and this is about her trying to make this cafe work in like fantasy land and it's so cute like i really like it it's a good time so i will give you some more updates on that as well but right now i need to get to my lgbtq film class um so i gotta head to campus right now so yeah hi babes so it's much later in the day it is i want to say like seven I just dropped the top of my travel coffee mug but yeah it's like 7 30 and i'm finally home from my film class that class is so fucking long it's like agonizing almost um so i'm back from that class and i need to do some homework for um this like sociology class that i'm in that's about like love and family and marriage um so i'm I have to do some homework for that class um, and I need to do some homework for my medieval literature class and I also have a paper due for that class tomorrow um, so I need to like at least finalize my outline if I'm not going to start writing it yet um, and there's probably some other homework that I need to do that I'm forgetting about but uh, yeah lots of stuff and things that need to happen that's all that's what's on the agenda but before any of that can happen I need to eat something I only ate I, I had like eggs and coffee this morning and I'm pretty sure that's the only thing I ate today So I need to provide my body with some sustenance and then I'll probably be doing some more homework but Before I get into all of that other good stuff um, I want to tell you about legends and lattes because this book is so so cute and it's really like warm and fluffy and I highly recommend it to anybody who has been searching high and low for like a slice of life kind of fantasy so Legends and Lattes is about this girl named Viv or this orc named Viv and she has been a part of this like roving mercenary band for a long time um, but she finally decides like she's ready for retirement so she does this one final job and she decides she's going to settle down in this um, town in fantasy land called Thune. So she settles down in Thune and she decides she's going to open up a coffee shop and so this story is about her progress opening the coffee shop and like trying to get it to become like a successful business and all of the people in this small town that she's in the, all of her repeat customers and her co-workers you know, i just absolutely love it like it's so so cute i'm like at 90 percent, so i just need to finish it up um so i'm gonna finish it while i'm eating my dinner but it's just so so cute and it's just it's all about the found family so i feel like if you love found family and if you like fantasy but you're not looking for the kind of fantasy where it's like oh my god we need to save the world and everything's falling apart like if you're not interested in that but you want something that's kind of magical and kind of fun and whimsical in that way then i would highly recommend this it's also sapphic there's like this really cute side relationship it's really not at all focused so like don't read it for the romance but there is a side sapphic relationship i won't say side because like it the main character viv is sapphic and she's in a relationship that develops over the course of the story but it's not like a main main thing that gets a whole lot of page time but her relationship is really really cute um i also love her cook like she has a baker because this is a coffee shop so she has like baked goods there and she hires this person named thimble and thimble is like a rat and it, it was just it was very much giving me remy ratatouille you know like it's just really cute and the rat is like a culinary genius like i don't know it's just cute and they're like like the rat he invented cinnamon rolls and everybody's like obsessed with them and i don't know it's just so cute and adorable and ridiculous and i absolutely love it and i will also highly recommend the audiobook i did end up checking out the audiobook just because I heard that the author of this book, Travis Baldry, is actually an audiobook narrator like by trade and that's what he does 
outside of writing so i was like oh well i have to know like what this book is going to sound like and he narrates his own audiobook obviously and he's really really good at it like he's incredibly good at his job so i think that if you're looking for something that is short it's only about 250 pages something that's sweet and very wholesome there's found family vibes it's magical and whimsical but you know it's really easy reading and you're also looking for something to listen to i would highly recommend this on audio or physically whatever whatever the case may be also i just really like the cover the cover is very cute um so it, it just a very enjoyable reading experience all around and i am going to now make my dinner before i keel over because i haven't eaten today one week later okay so allow me to explain i started this vlog wednesday um, i don't know why i started a vlog on a wednesday it was a kind of a random choice especially since it's supposed to be like a weekly vlog so what was i thinking um but i i attempted to start that vlog i filmed some stuff and then i had to write a paper on thursday and then friday i just kind of completely crashed i didn't do anything vlog worthy and then this weekend i didn't really do much i did have the live show with the literally dead book club for razor blade tears so if you were interested in my razor blade tears thoughts you can check out me discussing it with kayla from books and lala and with molly from mind of molly so i will leave that link in the description below um so that's like that's the catch up from the past few days uh this week i have a paper due for my american fiction class and i also need to read um the autobiography of angela davis this week because for my life narratives class um it's a class about like uh female activists and uh yeah so i'm reading that this week and we have like a bunch of quizzes to do uh i've got some other stuff to do i yeah so we're, that's what we're going to be doing i'll update you on any additional work um that i will be doing this week obviously because that's what a weekly vlog is um and also my bed looks like a bomb blew up over there because i am shipping out a bunch of orders for pango books because i am unhauling and decluttering my book collection very aggressively these days and i'm about to ship some packages today so it's Tuesday, so it's Medieval Literature Day. I'm headed to campus, um, and so I have that one class, and then I've got a lot of homework to do for some of my online classes. However, I did end up ignoring my homework, ignoring my responsibilities, and I read a manga called A Sign of Affection, and it is absolutely adorable. Highly recommending it to all of my manga girlies. It was beautiful. It's basically about this girl named Yuki and she's deaf and so she's like a freshman in college. This is her first college experience and this is her first experience at like a educational institution um, besides like a school specifically for deaf individuals. So this is about the various ways that she communicates with the people in her life at college. Um, and she ends up meeting this guy named Itsuyomi and uh, he's like this really cool guy. He always is traveling abroad. He's in like this club that her friend is in or like he's like a friend of a friend basically and they end up meeting and sparks just kind of fly a little so they're spending some time together and yuki is now teaching and yuki is now teaching isu um sign language but this is so so beautiful i want to show you a few of the panels that i really love um also the translation in this is absolutely gorgeous because the writing is really lyrical and there's a lot of like really beautiful imagery and i feel like sometimes translations in manga don't really capture like the artistry of the writing so this translation is just so good and yuki, yuki and isu they have my heart they're just so so sweet together and i love it it's amazing so good so yeah I headed to campus. Hopefully it'll be a very productive day, but also I am incredibly tired, so I need caffeine immediately.
besties i'm genuinely so tired that it should be a crime um my professors should be indicted on crimes of overworking me i am so so tired it's unbelievable okay so last night i ended up finishing uh what what i don't really remember what i filmed yesterday my brain is just that fried but uh yesterday i was working on angela davis's biography and i did end up finishing it and it was absolutely incredible i would definitely say this like required reading i think that everyone should read it and it's just really really good and i will also say it's a good entry point into various social issues that angela really talks about and is passionate about in all of her other um works outside of the biography so like for example she talks about like oppression and state violence and how oppression in various parts of the world are, are really very connected um, and she begins like generating those kind of ideas in this autobiography um, and then you see like those ideas come to fruition and be fully explained um, and expounded upon in her book Freedom is a Constant Struggle which is a which is a book that kind of draws parallels between the Black Lives Matter movement and Palestinian apartheid uh, and basically talking about just like state violence um, and the role that that plays in oppressing minority groups. Uh, similarly, she talks about like gender and class and race and the intersection of all of those things. You know, she mentions this and brings this up in talking about her youth in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and you know she really roots these ideas in her personal experience but then she goes further with those ideas in her book I believe it's called women class and race or maybe women race and class I can't remember the exact order of the words but I'll show you what the book looks like um, and yeah and she also talks about you know her time in prison and how I would say that that definitely informs some of her ideas about like prison abolitionism and how the prison system is just so incredibly corrupt and it is not a system of reform um and you know etc etc things that i believe she expounds upon more in her book why prisons are obsolete so i would definitely say that this is like a very good starting point for angela davis's work and for the theories that she works from it was incredible i would highly recommend it and the audiobook is narrated by angela herself and she's just a very effective reader um so yeah i would i would definitely recommend it uh so today i need to write a paper for my queer cinema class um and i also need to take the quiz for the angela davis biography um we had to take three separate quizzes for the book i already took two of them i did okay so i need to take the third one I need to write this paper for my queer cinema class it's about the film circumstance and like how the film uses emotion to convince you of x y and z um but i actually don't know what the paper is going to be about but the paper is due at 4 p.m and i get to start it so i need to go do that um and yeah. hi friends uh much later in the day i have completed my essay that i need to do it was a relatively short one it was only three pages um but i finished it with like 30 minutes to spare before the submission deadline so we love and hate that for me um i really need to stop procrastinating it's a disease um i also took a quiz today um so that's out the way but i've decided that to treat myself i'm going to sit here and eat some ice cream spin and jerry's um chocolate fudge brownie it's very good i love it um so i'm gonna eat this and i'm gonna spend a little bit of time reading the jade what is it called the Jade Setter of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee, and I'm so excited to read this, you guys. You don't understand. So this is a part of the Greenbone Saga. This is a short little novella um, set in the Greenbone world, um, and it's about like this random side character who is a Jade Setter's apprentice. And I am so excited to read this because this deals with one of the most interesting to me, like small aspects of the Greenbone Saga world. Um, if you don't know what the Greenbone Saga is about, it's basically like this uh, mafia fantasy where we have these two Greenbone clans who are fighting against each other for control of this magical jade that is like a sole resource um, from their country of KCON, right? So essentially, um, we have like the, the Mountain Clan and the No Peak Clan are at war. They're fighting each other. And Greenbones are people who are... I would say that they're genetically sensitive to jade and they can use the jade to do magical things basically right so they are basically in control of the world their society is really based around like greenbone culture and one of the main aspects of greenbone culture is that 
you can have like duels with people and when you duel them if you win the duel you receive that person's jade and so a person who has a lot of jade is someone who is a renowned warrior and you know they're really intimidating really scary but the cool thing about it for me is that the Greenbone Warriors, they're also individual in the way that they choose to wear and display their jade. But like Hilo, my favorite character, he has his jade displayed like on his neck, like on his collarbone here. He has jade piercings and he has like jade nipple rings and he also has like, I feel like at one point he had like a jade like eyebrow piercing. Like he, he was just like covered in jade piercings at one point. And other characters, they wear them as like necklaces, watches, etc. And so this story is about the jade setter of Jan Loon who takes this jade, you know, the raw material and makes it into this jewelry that everyone wears and like his apprentice does the piercings for the Greenbone Warriors and stuff and it's just so interesting to me. Like I don't know if this is going to be something that everybody is going to care about but I care so much about this because this is one of my favorite elements of the story and one of the aspects of the Greenbone culture that was so fascinating to me while I was reading the series. So like I'm eating it up. I'm about 10% into this um, ebook because I do have an arc. This is coming out like in April I think um, but I'm living so I'm gonna read that while I eat my ice cream and then I'll do more homework tonight. Um, okay so in bed, scarf on, about to go to sleep but I just finished the Jade Setter of Jan Loon and it was just, it was so nice being back in the Greenbone Saga world and getting cameos from some of my favorite characters of all time. Um, it was just really great and it's really quite short but it kind of has like a mystery element to it because um, it's about this jade setter and some stuff and things are stolen from his jade shop and so this story is about like investigating that and finding out who did it. Um, and yeah, it was a really fun mystery. I really liked it. It was very good. And honestly, it made me tear up a little bit near the end. Um, because Fonda Lee's just that girl. And I don't know, she just knows how to tug on my heartstrings. So, it was incredible. Um, and I'm very tired. So, I'm gonna go to bed now. But, I'll see you all tomorrow. I kind of look crazy. I've been sleeping all day because I'm so stressed out that my brain has like quite literally shut down. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going through. That's what we're working with right now. Um, I need to write a paper. The paper is due tomorrow. Uh, it's due like tomorrow evening, but it's still due tomorrow. And I was planning to read um, there as we're watching Godford, blah, 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 blah. But I can't because we can only write about books that we read in like the first half of this semester. And technically, Their Eyes Were Watching God is part of the second half of the curriculum. So I can't write my paper about that. So I have to rework my whole topic and uh, like my thought process about what I'm going to write. Um, so I am stressed and I'm losing my mind. But at the very least, I won't have to read like a whole book to execute my vision. Um, so... That's where we're at on that. That's where we're at on that. But uh, my bestie Erin has recommended me this book. And so I'm reading it. And I'm living my best life. I'm 33% into it. It's like a smutty Omegaverse story. If you don't know what the Omegaverse is, please just look it up. I, I can't explain it. Yeah, I like it. It's a fun time. It's giving everything that I need to give. And the male main character, Griffin, uh, call me because I'm free on Thursdays, so call me on Thursdays when I'm free because he is so fine. It don't even make sense. And Emily, the, the female protagonist, she's so cute, like very adorable personality. I like it and I'm rooting for her. So yeah, I'm going to keep reading it and I'm going to finish it and then I'll do homework, theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, y'all. I am a little bit fucked right now and not in a good, fun, life affirming sort of way. Um, my nose ring fell out last night and I've been trying to put it back in for like a good 30 minutes, but I can't because my nails are just too long. So I can't like get the, the stud in the under part 
from the inside of my nails. I can't do it. And I'm struggling. I, I hate it here. We'll report back if I do end up getting it in. I lost the fucking stud, y'all. I lost it. I have no idea where it went. Um, I was trying to put it in on my 59th attempt. And I dropped it. And now it's nowhere to be found. So, time to just hop on Amazon and buy a new one, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just feel so bare. I feel so naked. Uh, I feel violated. I need my nose ring back so badly. You don't understand. It's like almost 2 p.m. It's Friday and I have a paper to write that's due at midnight. It's like a four page paper. Um, and I've talked to you guys a little bit about the paper before. It was going to be uh, centered. I was going to try to center the paper around um, there as we're watching God and it was actually going to be more of a creative piece. But I have actually since finished their eyes were watching God. I listened to the audiobook last night and I finished it. Um, but I I don't think that I'm going to be able to bring my vision to fruition in such a short amount of time. So I'm instead going to use some short stories that we read in the beginning of the semester um, by Hemingway and Anderson by Hemingway and um, Sherwood Anderson and maybe somebody else. Flannery O'Connor or Fitzgerald or something and I'm just gonna write about like a shared theme between them and do an analysis because um, analysis is pretty easy to do creative stuff would probably take me longer so I think I'm just gonna you know do, go the path of least resistance I'm probably gonna do that um, so yeah that's what I'm working on academically but I also but also last night in addition to finishing their eyes for watching God um, which is really good. I honestly, it's interesting because I read this when I was in high school and I feel like I forgot so much of what the actual plot is like and what stayed with me throughout these years is just how much I enjoyed the the regional dialect that Zora Neale Hurston employed in writing the book. That's what was most memorable to me about the story. Um, and so it was interesting reading this. It felt like reading the book all over again because I honestly didn't remember any of the stuff that happened but this is a book about a girl named Janie and her various marriages throughout her life and like all of her different relationships and how those relationships affect her. It's also about like colorism um, and violence, gendered violence etc. Um, so yeah like it, it's a very interesting story uh, and it was interesting to it was intriguing to come back to it and realize how much I had forgotten since reading it in high school. Um, but last night I did also finish reading Heat Haven by Sarah Blue. Um, this was kind of vaguely a buddy read with Erin from Booked and Busy. Y'all know Erin. Y'all know I love Erin. That's my bestie. Um, she's basically in my back pocket at all times. I talk to her all hours of the day and anytime she comes across a story that she thinks I might even remotely like, she tells me to download it and I do. So that's exactly what happened last night. I downloaded Heat Haven and it's this Omegaverse story. Again, I'm not going to explain the Omegaverse. If you get it, get it. If you get it, you get it. And if you don't, you don't. Um, but in the Omegaverse, essentially like Omegas, they go into heat. So this is about this girl named Emily. She's going into her, she's going into heat. She needs some help through her heat. So she goes to this place called Heat Haven that uh, like partners Omegas with Alphas to get them through their heat. So she gets partnered with some Alphas. Um, so she's at this place, Heat Haven, and she ends up getting stuck in the elevator with this Alpha named Griffin. And things go from there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. It's kind of a reverse harem. So there are multiple love interests in the story. But I'm going to say that Griffin outsold them all. He was a server and he served me a five course meal he, in like 100 pages. He was just that guy. Um, and I loved him so much. I, like it, it just, it, it defied logic and reason how amazing he was. And you know, if this wasn't fictional, if he wasn't a book character, I would absolutely become Mrs. Steal Your Man and I would have stole him from Emily in a heartbeat because he was just, he was fucking perfect. I love him so much. He's just everything that I enjoy in like a male romance hero. You know, he was, he was grumpy, he was rich, he was sexy, he was tall, muscular. I mean, he was, just, he was just giving, you know, it was just like, it was all the things. It was all there. Good for Miss Emily. She won. She won grand prize. She hit the mega millions. I mean, she won, you know, so good for her. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. It was a fun time. I give it like 3.5 stars because it is really, really short. I know it's a novella, but I think that it should have been a longer book. I think it should have been like a 400 page book because 
Emily has multiple suitors and I feel like there's just not enough time in the book for you to actually give a damn about her relationship with anybody other than Griffin. So I think that this story would have been better served if it was like 300, 400 pages. But I'm not the writer. I'm just a reader. And I enjoyed it. It was fine. It was a cool time. Um, but yeah. So let me go and like be an academic and stop reading to avoid my responsibilities. You know, maybe that's maybe that's what needs to happen. So I will see you all in my next update. Maybe. I don't know if I'm going to really read anything this weekend, but I feel like this video has become quite insane in terms of the number of books that I've read. Like, I think that over the course of filming this video, there's maybe like six books read, six or seven. There might be six. I don't know. I can't count, but it seems like a lot. Is it a lot? It might be a lot. I just got home. I'm incredibly drunk. I need to wash off my makeup before I fuck up my skin. Um, but I secured three numbers at the bar. Uh, so good for me. Uh, and yeah, I will update you maybe tomorrow because I did end up telling my professor that I need an extension and I used said extension uh, to go have fun. So yeah, hopefully tomorrow I'll be feeling more academically minded. Um, but yeah, good night. Okay, so editing Amina here. Yes, I did in fact get an extension just so that I could go out and get drunk. And I did end up going out and getting drunk with my mother of all people. She's a great time. But I do want you to know that there is a very, very happy ending to this story. I did end up writing the paper using the very gracious extension that my professor offered me and I got a 90 on the paper. So woohoo, I ended up writing it about three short stories. One by Leslie Silko, um, an indigenous writer. One by Sherwood Anderson, another one by Ernest Hemingway and I talked about like a connected theme of violence in all of the stories and I, I did like a regular old analysis paper and I didn't do the creative topic that I had originally planned um but it was regular plain old analysis paper and I got an A so woohoo I know I seem like a very negligent student but I do know what I'm doing sometimes so it all worked out we love a happy ending uh yeah so roll the rest of the clips hi y'all so it is saturday and i am planning to end the vlog here because if you can believe it i have somehow 22 assignments that are due next week um they're all like little assignments like i have to do reading and then they're like reading quizzes and stuff like that but there's still a ton of them and there's a lot of stuff that needs to be accomplished for next week so I don't want to have my attention split between trying to like film a vlog and you know update you and all that um so I'm planning to do homework this weekend I'm not going to do anything else particularly cool or fun and I am going to try and like actually focus on my academics and not do any more um outside reading like I have been this past week <clears throat> but I did end up reading quite a bit this week and in this video slash in this video because some of the footage is not necessarily from this week um but it was a great week for me reading wise I read a bunch of stuff and honestly I had a lot of fun reading it or it was all very enlightening so let's quickly try to go over everything that I read in this video so first we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is really, really great. I would highly recommend it. I read um, Sign of Affection by Sue Morishida. It's very, very cute. I can't wait to read volume two. I do have it on hold in my library, um, so hopefully they will get it to me soon because I desperately need to know more about these two protagonists, Yuki and uh, Itsu. They're just very cute and I can't wait to see more from them. Uh, then I read The Jade Setter of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee. This um, I really liked it a lot. I gave it four stars uh, and it was good. So I'm very blessed that I was able to get an arc of it and I believe this is coming out in April, maybe like end of April, but it was very good. I read uh, an autobiography by Angela Davis and this was amazing. Um, it's really interesting, very insightful, and it definitely has motivated me to pick up more of her work. I have read Freedom is a Constant Struggle by her before and that was great. And so this is my second work by her, but I can't wait to read more. I think my next one will probably be Why Prisons Are Obsolete. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to dig more into Angela Davis and her activism and her praxis. I think it would be great. Reread um, Their Eyes Were Watching God for my American fiction class. And that was a, another, like, you know, insightful rereading experience. Um, I liked it. It was good. I enjoyed it when I read it in high school. I enjoyed it now. It's a very well-executed story. Um, I can't say it's, like, my favorite story of all time. But I think that Zora Neale Hurston was a very talented writer. Um, and so I'm glad that I got the chance to reread this with, like, 
new eyes as a college academic versus a high schooler um so i appreciated that a whole lot and yeah i also read um a smutty omega verse reverse harem called he haven and i found a new book boyfriend griffin miller i love you um we're getting married so yeah if you enjoyed this video please be sure to leave me a like maybe some comments i would appreciate receiving the green heart emoji for how much i love the green bone saga i had a fun time filming it i hope you had a fun time watching it and i hope to see you all in my next one bye you guys